We're about to watch a recording of a live cold call that I made to an expired lead. And I'm gonna break down exactly what, where my thoughts were at and what my intentions were with each question that I ask. This was a lead that my agent was calling next to me uh, and then he couldn't set the appointment so he hit, passed it off to me. So let's watch. Hey, Ibad, uh, this is Aaron. You just spoke to my partner, Bruce, about your property on that was a very intentional first sentence. Each each word I said was designed to keep him hooked into this call. Hey, this is Aaron. You talked to my partner, Bruce. So I'm implying immediately that he is connected to me in some way of what from what he did earlier today. I'm not just a random cold call. Hey, you spoke to someone that I know. He said that you got a lot of showings on that property, but no offers. He said, you got a lot of showings on that property, but no offers. This is what my agent told me that he said. So immediately I'm addressing the issue that he had the last time the home was on the market. Hey, this is Aaron. Um, you just spoke to a partner of mine, Bruce. He told me uh, about your shoreline property. He told me that you got a bunch of showings, but no offers. And then I didn't ask a question. I didn't, I didn't move it along anywhere here. Uh, that surprised me, Bob. So what's got to <laughs> Okay, I did not move it anywhere. Uh, um, there was a gap, but I but I did follow it up with a statement of acknowledgement. Wow, that's surprising to me, Evad. And that right there humanizes me. It turns me from a random cold caller to a potential human on the other line. Wow, that surprised me, Evad. So what's got you wanting to sell this property? I said, what's got you wanting to sell this property, which is a question that elicits a motivation. I regretted saying that immediately because I realized uh, he's not going to tell me that. He's not going to tell me his intention on selling. To a stranger like that i should have gone the problem route which is a, a like why do you think that happened what happened last time like did your agent give you any feedback on why it didn't sell what what why do you want to sell this property bud so i doubled down I, I knew i was going the wrong direction why do i want to sell it yeah i'm confused why it didn't sell <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah i'm confused on why it didn't sell so i knew i was going the wrong way so um I, I went the other way uh, asking for the problem, and I'm pretty sure he kind of presses me on that. Um, you're asking two different questions here. Um, so <laughs> I am asking two different questions. But the reason why he's going to stay on the phone with me is I've associated that, hey, I have something to do with something that happened to you previously today. You and I have talked to, you and I are in association with someone that you talked to earlier. I know that you had this specific issue with your house the last time and all that in the first 30 seconds associates me into his life in a deeper way than a than a random cold caller why i want to sell it is because i've already got a second home that i'm living in and don't need two mortgages okay so i he, uh, i'm surprised he told me his motivation and i need to reward that um and then why i didn't sell i i don't know um, I'm not really sure. So he both both right there. He 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 has given me the uh, the issue with the problem, which I, I don't know why I didn't sell. And he has also given me his motivation, which is I have two homes now. I don't want to I don't want to pay paying two mortgages. So I need to affirm both of those things, or I, I don't know if I affirm both of those things. Let's see. Okay. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well, at these interest um, rates, I, mean, I can. Uh, I wouldn't want to pay two mortgages either. All right, that's kind of my reward um, that I give him as a uh, as an I'm acknowledging with a statement about why he wants to sell. I wouldn't want to pay two mortgages either at these interest rates. Again, that's a statement of acknowledgement and the quality of statement of acknowledgements determine how long he's going to stay on the phone with you and the quality of the answers that he gives you. The statement of acknowledgement is what humanizes you and 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 turns an interrogation into a conversation. And the quicker you could turn a cold call into a conversation, the better your chances are at getting what you need out of that person uh, information-wise and then setting that appointment. Oh, and by the way, I'm launching an eight-week coaching program where you and I are gonna be working directly together and I'm gonna teach you how to take one to four new listings a month, every month, so if you want more information on that, check the link in the description. It's only available for a limited time, so get in while you can. So you don't know why it didn't sell, but it sounds like you definitely still want to get this property sold. So you don't know why it didn't sell. So that there's me acknowledging the problem that he gave me earlier. So I, I acknowledged both of those things, both of the answers that he gave me. Uh, what would be stopping you yeah. from meeting with us and going over exactly what we could do to get this property sold the second time around? Uh -huh. All right, so I'm immediately trying to dig up the problems and objections before I even close. 
So earlier, uh, Bruce tried to set the appointment. How, uh, Bruce, my new agent. Um, he tried to set the appointment. However, he wasn't able to. He wasn't willing to meet. He was not willing to meet. And that's, that's what I understand out of that before I call. So I'm like, hey, what's stopping you from meeting? I, I, I'm not even going for the close yet. I'm, I'm like, hey, I understand you want to still want to sell. I understand that you don't know why it didn't sell. What would be stopping you from meeting right now? And I, I want him to give me all the reasons why he doesn't want to meet. And I need to resolve and handle all those objections so that they're all out of the way I, and I can go in for the close. So that's going to be my, that's my mindset. That's my goal here for the next however many minutes. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not interested in, in listing it right now. I'm just not list, interested in listing it right now. So uh, I don't know what I'm about to say next, but what I should be saying is I need to acknowledge what he's saying with a statement of acknowledgement. And I need to dig deeper because I'm just not interested in listing right now is not like, that's not a real objection. That's just a vague objection. That's a vague reason for not wanting to proceed. So I need to, I need to get him to specify. Okay. So Would you, you can call me back if you have like an offer or something or? Uh -huh. Okay, so call me back if you have an offer or something. That's a signal that he still wants to sell. I'm not really sure, but I could, I, could bring, I could bring you an offer. It might, not, it might not be the price you want, but I could bring you an offer on that. Is that okay? So it, that, that's, that, sta that question that I asked him is kind of invalidating what he wants, which is just bring me a buyer. Um, I don't know how that would help me here. Right. So it sounds like you're trying to sell this property for the highest price, right? So my question that I, the question, so the question that I asked him, which was, yeah, I could bring you an offer, but it probably wouldn't be the highest price. Is that okay? Uh, no, it wouldn't be right. You're looking for the highest price possible. That question that I asked was designed to bait him into the, into giving me the answer that I wanted and invalidate what he, what he is asking for, which is an offer. Well, what if the offer sucks? Well, that's not what I want. Exactly. So sometimes, and I don't know how many times I threw it without the call, throughout the call, but throughout my life or throughout, throughout work, sales, or when I'm talking to other people, I force people into giving me the answer that I want and I solidify that. So, hey, look, I know your whole goal here is to net a certain amount of money for this home, right? And then the, the prospect says, yeah. And then I say, exactly. So before we make any decisions, let's get together and go. And then I go in for the close. I have people give me a yes or a no. Um, and then I solidify it with a right or an exactly, Bob. So before we make any decisions, let's get together and whatever. Obviously, I mean, nobody sells their property for the lowest price. Right, you're not just trying to give this away. Right. Exactly. So look, Eva, what we can do here is get together. We can go over it. So again, he said, bring me an offer. I invalidated how good of a strategy that would be by just saying, hey, I, yeah, I could bring you an offer, but it's probably not the price you want. And then he says, no, well, I'm trying to sell for the highest price. And, that, and then I, and I solidify that, right. You're, yes, exactly. You're trying to sell for the highest price. And so um, from there, I'm gonna go in for the close. And if there is no other objection, he will say yes. However, if, he, if this close is met with, a with an objection, then I need more resolving to do. So look, Eva, what we can do here is get together. We can go over exactly what we can do this next time around to actually get your property sold. We could go over why it didn't sell the last time. And if it makes financial sense for you, Eva, then you can make a decision from there. I've got time today at four or six. What works best for you? Uh, so there's the close. I went in for the close. Let's see what he says. Either time. I'm not listing the property. That's all right, Ibad. I, I understand it's been on the market for a while and, and you're, you might be a little frustrated. So uh, that, that right, what I just said right there is a statement of acknowledgement to his declining of my offer of uh, meeting. The reason why I said all that, it's that's fine. I understand you're frustrated after your house not selling. Um, the reason why I said that is because if I just immediately went in, went in with a, why do you not want to meet? That is what exactly what I'm trying to avoid, which is creating an interrogation. I'm trying to keep this a conversation. Hey man, that's fine, I get it. Your property didn't sell, you're frustrated and you don't wanna do this, I, I understand. I, I turn it into a conversation. I give him my little offering to, these, to this conversation and then, and then I'm going to ask him um, my next question, which is I'm trying to dig out all your objections, bro. Give me your objections. 
Give me the reason why you're not wanting to meet so I could solve that problem for you. What's stopping you from wanting to list? Uh, well, there's other avenues of, um, for the property, right? I could do uh, Airbnb, I can rent it. Um, you know, there's other avenues to make money from it. So that's where we are at right now. Yeah, you got options, and, and you want to make sure you're yeah. making the best uh, financial decision based on your options, right? Absolutely, yeah. Right. Yeah. Would you rather say... So um, me saying, me, me kind of being that agreeable, yeah, it sounds like you want to... Uh, make sure you're making the best, choosing the best financial option. Again, that's a statement of acknowledgement. The quality of my statements of acknowledgements are pretty high and it's designed to make them like go along with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that kind of mindset, if that, if, if the prospect is in that kind of mindset, yeah, you get me. He is going to be more willing to give me the answers that I'm looking for. He's, and he's going to be less likely to hang up the phone. I'm a real, at this point, I'm a real person over the phone. I'm a human being. And he's not going to, he's not going to just hang up. He's not going to be like, bro, I'm not going to tell you. He's, he's not going to be short with me. He's not going to withhold answers from me. Like at this point, he's telling me everything I need. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Would you rather sell it and cash out or would you rather be a landlord? Um, well, um, it depends. Um, if, if I get, can get enough for it, then I would cash out. Okay. Um, but I don't have a problem being a landlord. Me, my family has other properties and, um, I help manage those. So it's not a huge deal. I just, I was surprised that this one didn't sell. Yeah. Would you rather cash out or would you rather be a landlord? To some homeowners, they don't want to be landlords. So that question right there, to some people, to some prospects, they're going to say, well, I want to cash out. But to him, he sounds like he's down for both options. It's just whichever one makes the most financial sense. It sounds like you just want to understand what your options are and what you can get for this house if you were to sell it, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, look. So I was teeing him up for a pre-close. So, hey, so it sounds like as long as we can get you your motivation or solve your problem, it sounds like that's exactly what you're looking for, right? Again, I'm forcing him the answer to give, uh, I'm forcing him to give me an answer I'm looking for, the yes or no answer I'm looking for. And then after he gives me that yes, or no, I don't want that. After he gives me the answer that I want, I'm gonna say exactly. So. And then that's the close. It leads up to the close. Before we make any decisions, Bob, let's get together and go over exactly how we can make that happen for you. I got time today at four or six. What works best for you? Uh, we can hop on a Zoom later today. I can show you exactly what we could sell for. And if it makes sense for- I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm already telling you I'm not listening to Bob. Okay, so it's now my second time of uh, uh, trying to dig in for the answer. Um, tr I'm, tr I'm just trying to help him see, it. hey man, I could show you if this could make financial sense. Um, but again, he's not, he's not going for it. So I need to keep digging. If you have an offer for me, if somebody's in the area looking for this house, yeah. uh, you have an offer for me, you can, you can call me back and we can work out the details that. Yvette, yeah, I'm, con I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I'm not... I'm, I must be missing something here. Cause it sounds like you want to sell it for the highest price but you're waiting for someone to just bring you an offer and it's probably not going to be the offer you want. And no, you... I'm not waiting for you to bring me an offer. I'm, I'm, but uh, you're open to it. planning on other, other things, right? There's uh -huh. other things that I can do with the property. So, um, it's not a... so there are other things I can do with the property. Um, I need to understand more on what that means. I'm just selling the house. I just told you I have other options. So, and there's even a third option that I don't feel comfortable disclosing with you. So, um, you know, there's, sure there's other it. options. So he mentions a third option that I'm not comfortable disclosing with you. That might be the entire reason on why he's not uh, wanting to meet, on why he's not wanting to list the home. So I need to kind of address that in a way where I'm not prying and, and getting too I mean, he says he's not too comfortable um, disclosing that info. So let's see what I say. Sure There's other options for the property. Offer giving it, and, giving it to me? Um, yeah, it was gifting it to you. <laughs> I'm joking, you bet. <laughs> All right, so I, I addressed that third option um, without straight up asking about what it was. 
and I made a joke, and I even made him laugh. So at this point, he and I are friends. Like, I'm sure that out of all the people that's been blowing him up about the expired home that he had, um, I'm sure that, like, right there, I, I, I've, let me break down what I've done so far on this call. So in the four minutes that I've been on the phone with this guy, I'm willing to bet that there is no one else out of the hundreds of calls that he's gotten so far. There is nobody else that's been able to connect with him the way I did. I'm, I'm having a conversation with him. He's telling me all of, of his things. I'm making him laugh. Like we're having a, we're having a long conversation about this. So um, that's exactly where statements of acknowledgements will get you. You, you. So basically a statement of acknowledgement is going to give him, is going to keep him on the phone with you and remove that barrier where he is willing to give you high quality answers to your questions. And as long as you understand the framework of conversion, as long as you understand a good intro, how to get the, extract the motivation and problem, how to tee up a pre-close and, 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 uh, and go in for the close, if you understand that, you could get very far. And then if you add in the additional how to handle all objections layer to that, if the seller is motivated, you can set any listing appointment, even the hardest ones you can do that if you understand this entire framework. And again, if you want to learn exactly this framework, the link to more info is in the description below. Um, you know, it's, 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 about, um, it's about weighing these options, and yeah. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to sell it. Uh -huh. um, and I'm not going to sell it for the lowest price, and I'm not going to sell it for um, um, you know, the highest price. Just... So at this point, I'm, I'm really getting, I, I'm really understanding how unmotivated he is. He's got several options of things he could do with the house. He does not want to list the home. There's some third. There's some cryptic third reason why he doesn't want to do anything. Reasonable offer for it, and I'm not listing it right now. Um, and when I'm ready to list it, then I will. Uh, I will make those calls. You know. Okay. All right. Well, how about this uh, then? I'm not listing it right now, and I have other options. That's that's controversial. Sure. You. It sounds like you've made up your mind on not doing it now. So how about this? I'll yeah. stay in touch. Let me send you my information so you have it, you bud. What's a good email okay. for you? So I just went in for the email close. What's what's going to happen is he's going to get a drip sequence of um, who I am. It, it's basically just like social proof emails that show, hey, look, I'm great. Don't forget about me. Hey, look, I'm great. Don't forget about me. Yeah, man. It, when you do decide to sell it, let's let's actually get it sold for the highest price this next time around, okay? Okay, I'm good. All right, you bet. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Dang, I was good. Who's had it though? Who's gonna fold? I don't think he was gonna fold. He doesn't want to sell it at this point. Like he has options. He's weighing it out. But we'll stay in touch. There it is. I didn't set the appointment, but I got a solid lead, and I'll be following up with them and developing that relationship until he is ready to sell. If you want to learn exactly how I'm doing this, go to the link in the description below and sign up. I'll see you there.